live. Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday night. It is 9 o'clock, so it's time for uh, that thing we do where we all get together and hang out and talk about some stuff. This will be the final 2A Tuesday chat. Uh, before anybody panics, we're not going away. We're just going to... Uh, we're just going to do something different and rename it. Um, for a while, we've we've had weeks where sometimes we didn't talk about gun stuff, and uh, everything that we that we care about isn't only wrapped up in two A stuff. And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't maybe get a little bit wider reach, a little bit wider range of discussion topics. And uh, starting in October, which is next week, we will uh, we'll have the the Get Off My Lawn podcast, which you guys have been hearing me say for quite some time anyway. Uh, I do kind of self-identify as a grumpy old man. Most of the people that have heard me uh, complain about stuff wouldn't disagree. So that's what's going to happen. We're not going away. We're just going to rename the podcast, and hopefully we can get uh, get some extra viewers out there that we don't normally get and uh, get some extra topics that we don't normally discuss. And we'll kind of open it up to to kind of a little bit of, of everything that way. So um, real quick here, we've got a few esteemed colleagues on our guest panel. So let's let everybody say hello tonight. Um, we'll go first in, first up. So Travis was here first. We'll let you say hello. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, make sure you check out my channel, Travis P11. Uh, real quick, very soon in a couple weeks, we'll be giving away a Bear Creek Arsenal 224 Valkyrie Upper. I'll have a promo video on that. All you got to do is just leave a comment on the video. You'll be in the drawing. And, uh, and then if you support my Patreon, we're going to start doing monthly Patreon drawings. I'm going to send something out uh, first of every month to a lucky patron. And a lot of cool stuff going on with the channel. So check it out, Travis P11. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Get some free stuff. Go support Travis. Yeah. It only costs a dollar a month, right, to be a patron? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I actually, yeah, and I put the, I do have exclusive Patreon drawings, and I do put my videos up early for patrons, and a lot of you, you know, a bunch of us do that too. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, it's just it's something to give back because I've got people that have been patrons for a couple of years now. They've just been, and that money contributes directly to the channel. I mean, well, obviously, you know, Patreon takes their little cut, but mm -hmm. I bought guns with it. I bought ammo with it. It's coming really handy. I bought, I purchased two firearms with uh, Patreon funds over the last three years, so it's fine with me and a lower. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. All right. And yeah, just uh, just real quick before I, I get to, to the other guests here, if you're not sure what Patreon is, you need to go to patreon.com. It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. I will get uh, Sandhill's sweetheart to drop that link out in the chat there. Um, go to patreon.com and look up some of your favorite channels from, from YouTube or gun channels, gun stream or what have you. Um, here's what's happening is anybody that used to make money that uh, used to make money posting videos up on YouTube really isn't anymore, especially if it has anything to do with guns or Second Amendment or freedom of any kind or uh, anything that's conservative. The money just, the rug got pulled out from under everybody. So uh, even if you want to support us with Super Chats uh, as we're live, that's great and we love it and we appreciate it. But we don't get much of that money and it takes a long time for Google to pay that out. Whereas Patreon, you can go, you can spend a dollar a month and support the channels that you like. And uh, you can support with more if you want to sometimes, but it's a it's a buck a month to throw a little love some to uh, to somebody that you really like watching their, their videos and, and uh, hearing what they have to say. And here's what's going to happen is they're going to get a lot more of that dollar from Patreon than they are from Google. And... The cool thing is, like Travis said, the money, most of us that have Patreon accounts, um, we take that money and reinvest it right back into bringing you more uh, more videos, higher quality videos, things like that. So if you want to support us, um, that's the best place to go do it right now. And I'm not e-begging, but at the same time, we've got bills to pay all of us. Um, none of us that are in this chat have this isn't our full-time job. We all have to work uh, and do this in our spare time. It's it's not a money-making venture and we don't do it for the money, Speak but at the yourself. same time, okay, except for you. Uh, but at the same <laughs> time, anybody that wants to, uh, that wants to help out and contribute a little bit, uh, we don't, we all do appreciate it. I'll speak for everybody. And I think we all have uh, Patreon accounts here that are, that are in the panel. Um, so we will move right along next up that uh, joined me before we went live. We had obnoxious one. What's up? Yo, I, I feel like since I just rebranded my show, 
that um, you're stealing stealing my uh, intellectual property if you're going to rebrand yours. So, what'd you rebrand to? I didn't even know you did. I should watch your stuff sometime. Do you have a channel? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do. It's uh, <laughs> it's somewhere it's somewhere on YouTube. I don't know. You're probably not going to find it a whole not a whole lot of people have. <laughs> But I think that's that's a that's a YouTube thing. Um, we changed it from Orange You Glad It's Not the Closer because that was kind of a mouthful. To now we're just going to call it Dumpster Fireside Chats. I don't know because Orange You Glad It's Not the Closer was genius, and I, it was it was who, whoever came up with that name needs a hug. I'm just saying. Well, if you're going to go to Wanamaker in November, you may get one. April. Nope. April. April. Nope. November. April. November. November. No, we keep, we, we're like two ships actually, passing in the night. We're just never gonna. I'm never gonna get that hug. <laughs> that's okay. I'm. Probably, okay I think. It. I think roll call's going in April. So Sweet. I'll, roll tell, I'll tell roll call to give you one. Okay. But yeah. Well, I'll take a second hand hug. Sergeant, I, Sergeant, I kind of <laughs> talked about this after second after Wanamaker hug. last April. That it's just because you've got Wanamaker in April, <laughs> and then you've got NRAM is also in April. And so it's just not going to be something that we can, you know, that you can swing those yeah. two in Shot April. shows in January, USCCA's in, in February, I think, or March, <clears throat> which I really want to make because it's in, it's in Kansas City this next spring, but I don't think we can do that and Tulsa, so we're probably going to pick Tulsa. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's our plan anyway is to, is to make it to, to want to make her, but not this fall. Because see, I, I can't I take hit, time hit. off for that and time off for deer season. Mm. And I love you guys, but I love uh, backstrap more. Venison is so good. Venison is I don't know. I, got, I think I got deer plenty jerky, of backstrap. Deer sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I tell you what, you start that hug and I'll pick it up in uh, Tulsa and then I'll pass it along. And we'll see if we can't get this hug to go all the way around the world. Hugs, hugs across America. Hugs I across want an obnoxious the world. hug, and I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm 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 known for the Joe Biden challenge, so you may not get a, um, may not get a hug. Do you whisper in my ear weird things too? Great. Yeah, I don't know that I want to be in Wanamaker uh -oh. with you now. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. Thanks for being here, obnoxious. Okay, next up we had Mr. Kingpin. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me. I always appreciate it. And thanks for being here. How's things been going? Uh, not too bad. Could be worse. Could be better. But no reason to complain. So it's just another day that ends in Y. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And last but not least, I tell you what, this guy is a delight to talk to every time he's in our chat. The Tactical Pickle, the California Cucumber, Calaveras 32 Special is up. See what dad I did there? jokes. Wow. A, a delight to talk to. Yeah, dad jokes central. <laughs> got the dad bod. Yeah, I got the dad the jokes. <laughs> well, at least your wife likes it. Not a dad. But uh, I appreciate the invite. Sorry <laughs> for jumping in late. Uh, I just got off work, so I'm in the vehicle, so I'm probably going to be muted unless I'm actually talking. Okay, not a problem. We will uh, we'll give you time to unmute. Um, if we ask any direct questions. All right. And then I didn't see that there was uh, somebody else hanging out in the green room. You were kind of just sitting quiet in the corner, not drawing a lot of attention to yourself. So Gizzard Gary's in the house. What's up, Mr. Give him the bird. Hey, not a whole lot. I just got here. Just got off work a few minutes ago. So, uh, thanks for the invite. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for being here. And this seriously right. is the grumpy old man chat. That's for... All of you guys are ancient. And then there's you, you young pup. Whippersnapper. <laughs> you get off my lawn. No, I see Anthills go grab me a switch. Let's teach this little boy some respect. Well, cut yeah. me a switch, boy. Go out and cut your own. That was the worst punishment. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. Cutting your own bell, switch man. is the worst thing because it's psychological God, terror. It is. You're out there looking at that tree going, hmm. Now, if I take that branch in, it's not going to hurt me, but they're just going to send me back out for another one and whip me twice. But if I pick that branch, it's going to kill me. So you got to find the right branch that it'll hurt, but not too much. So, okay. So now 
real quick, let me see who's out here in the chat. We've got uh, my beautiful hot date for life, Sandhill's sweetheart, was, of course, the first one in here because uh, she has an inside track here in the Sandhill's media empire. We also have Jay Brown. We've got Mike. We've got Boob Sweat. Who else is out there? Tennessee Gun Guy. Obnoxious was the first one, he says. Uh, I'm not sure that you and I agree on what first means. Um, Keith Gregory's out there. Gun Loving Grandpa. 10X Shooters. Travis doing double duty. Kingpin doing double duty. I uh, see SS Pawn out there. What's up, Stan? Gizzard's in the house doing double duty. Um, Georgia Trucker's out there. I miss Georgia Trucker. There you are. So... Yeah, and as people come in, make sure that uh, if you're watching this live, that you drop a comment in the chat. We uh, we really like being able to to see you and say hello. What's up, Blue Steel? Um, but we can't uh, we can't say hi if we can't see you, and we can't see you if you're not chatting. Uh, of course, if you are watching this on the replay, we still like your comments. So go ahead and say hi or drop a comment down below. Uh, you just can't do it in the live chat part. So you can, however. Click on that little live chat uh, icon if you're on your phone or, or on your computer and follow along as you're watching the replay if you want to. If you are listening while you drive, please do not do that. Keep your eyes on the road and we'll try not to do a whole lot of things on here that require you to, to actually have to look and see what's happening. Uh, Tim Foley's out there too. What's up, Tim? My Facebook follower turned YouTube follower. Cool, cool. All right. So tonight, I just kind of want to round out our final 2A Tuesday chat with uh, just a general topic because I'm really, really, really getting sick of hearing the word assault weapon because there's not an object in this room that I couldn't pick up and at least attempt to assault somebody with if I were of the mind to do that. Um, even, even more to the point, I want to. I want to just mention this too. Uh, my EDC here. This is not a weapon. I just want everybody to know that this is not a weapon of any kind. This is a defensive tool, and so um, to me, a weapon is something that is used to uh, to intentionally hurt or inflict pain on somebody. And this thing is is not for that. It is just to get me out of that situation should somebody want to inflict pain or try to hurt me uh, or worse or anybody that I am uh, with. So that being said, I want to keep this just kind of a fun chat at the same time. It's serious. Um, so, I mean, this is a real topic, but I just want to talk about how absurd it is that uh, when you're talking about a weapon, that doesn't have to be a firearm of any kind. Um, in fact, I would go so far as to say that you don't even have to have anything in your hand. I always tell Sandhill Sweetheart this. Um, what is it that I always say is the most deadly weapon in any room you're in? That's between your ears. It's right between your ears. Your mind is always the deadliest weapon that you possess, and anything else is an extension of that. So um, I'm just going to kick this off and let everybody just kind of have your own thoughts. We won't necessarily have to take turns. Just um, we'll try not to talk over each other. So when you hear things like weapon or assault weapon, what do you, what do you all think about what kind of goes through your mind? Well, an artificial term that was created to create these, this emotional tag to firearms, you know, the assault weapon, they automatically try to link it to the air 15, right? The fully automatic or the fully semi-automatic ones. Exactly. Exactly. It's just, it's just, Oh, was, we, we want to ban assault weapons. And they, they try to create this, you know, this fear of this term that they invented for my semi-automatic sporting rifle, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is just a tool, you know, like anything else. So I, it's, it's ridiculous. And you hear assault weapon used erroneously and constantly in the media and on the news. And it doesn't matter who the personal is. And that's, it's a tool that's used by the left to strike fear into the hearts of, people that aren't necessarily educated about firearms and that really bothers me, but that's just what they do. That's how they roll. There was a, uh, a post from, I think it was Gun Owners of America. Uh, it was a video, you know, with an article talking about it with one of the uh, Congress critters, as Budget would say, 
out of Texas, you know, talking about the AR with the, uh, the 50, it's 50 caliber bullet and all this other jargon that she was throwing out. I dropped a comment on that. I think that kind of fits along with what we're talking about here. The people that are using these terms definitely know, I think definitely think know what they really are. They're intentionally using words and phrases that have been created or manipulated you know what so that those who don't have the background in firearms or understanding of you know uh, emit a certain emotional reaction that they can then play on in order to uh, you know keep them. in order to get their goals with you know uh, usually not for the better Absolutely. Um, out there in the chat, Stan from SS Pawn is saying they're now calling it an assault style rifle. I haven't heard that one. Um, anybody else heard the that one yet? The assault style yeah, rifle? That's anything that's going to be an AR that looks like a combat weapon. And you know, they, they, they have that jargon they use in Australia to ban guns. If it looks like an AR-15, we're not going to let you buy it, even though it has nothing to do with an AR-15 or an M-16. So, assault style, they're trying to like give a outline to put in your mind when you think of assault style you think of that that traditional carbine look right that's what they want to try to throw does out that, there with assault style does that uh does that include like the uh the chassis bolt actions kind of makes you oh, wonder yeah yeah in australia they've banned guns that just look like air 15s and they might be straight pull single shot yeah they had that they had that Shotguns one that, that one that i did a video on i talked about it that didn't it's not it, it wasn't even semi-automatic it was just a bolt act it was a a straight pull 12 gauge single you just pull back on a charging handle every time you want to fire it but because it looked too much like a gun not even really the government it was their their importation branch for firearms that decided that nope the public can't have this and so they banned it looks scary you also got to think of the last time that legislation passed that was like basic and to the point. You know, it's just making something up. You want to ban speeding. And that's a one sentence report. Speeding is illegal. Bam. There it is. Pass that law. Here we go. No, that's a 3,000 page report, which no one ever reads. And that's where all these problems come in in these laws is when they ban assault style rifles on page 275, paragraph three, sentence four is your Glock 19. And I know I'm being a little bit hyperbolic there, but trying to make my point. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. But what's scary is if you look at the, uh, the assault weapons ban of 2019, go through and, and read that. Um, as I'm talking, if anybody out there can, anybody with a with a wrench can find the link to the the actual um, the actual Congress web page of the assault weapons ban of 2019. I can't think of what the name of the bill is. The one that just went to Judiciary Committee yesterday, or it was scheduled to go before Judiciary anyway. Yesterday, um, find that. Read through the actual text of it it takes a while and it sucks and there's a lot of scrolling as you scroll through all of the firearms that are specifically um brand and model that are listed that would be banned according to this this bill that's out there but you're really not <laughs> it's not that much hyperbola is is my point kingpin um that really is to the extent that some of these bills want to push things. They want to, they want to uh, eliminate any loopholes because it's any of these guns that are listed or any copies of these guns that are, you know, that might be made that aren't listed. So basically it's anything that is or isn't this gun is going to be outlawed. So it, it's very specific and yet very broad at the same time with the way it's worded. And it eliminates the option to uh, say, well, AR-15s are outlawed, so um, if somebody were to manufacture a different rifle that was called, you know, chicken fried steak as the name of the rifle, then that wouldn't be outlawed, right? They, they've learned their lesson on some of that stuff. So it's not just the fact that it's called this, it's also the fact that if it's copied, if it's a copy or it looks or, or it's 
designed to work the same as any of these listed guns. Still banned, still outlawed. So that means that there would be no more, no more uh, AR or AK pattern rifles or pistols allowed um, moving forward from that day. You know what I want to do, Sandhills? I want to go ahead and give them a dose of their medicine. They like to redefine our tools. Let's go ahead and redefine their legislature. Let's not call it the assault weapons ban of 2019. Let's call it the declaration of war on the American citizen. Is that kind of like the... Uh, I think so, because you're disarming us is what you're trying to do, and that's directly going against our constitutional right. Well, that's kind of so like the... Let's, call let's call it, it, we're going to call it the Declaration of War 2019 on the American citizen. That's what I'm going to call it from here on out. Mm -hmm. That's that's no different than uh, when we talk about the Disarm Women Act, right, that has to be renewed every couple of years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, allow to rape and pillage to continue mm -hmm. law, right? Is that... Yeah. Yep. yeah take really take, take let's, away let's, their Safety and Security let's, Act. Let's take it to the extremes. Let's create that fear. All right. Let's create that anxiety out there now for, for our side. Right. I want to go back a little bit to the, uh, the, not so much the assault style term, but anybody that says that, you know, military style firearms shouldn't be allowed in civilian hands, which first of all, um, anybody who says that we all, I think understand, and we all can agree at least in this chat. Um, anybody that says military style Firearms don't belong in the hands of citizens, doesn't understand, number one, how this country got here, and number two, how any of our hunting rifles got here. Um, there is not, that I'm aware of, there is not a firearm design that wasn't, at least the the general, the general um, action itself <clears throat> wasn't originally developed for military purposes. Um, I'm not coming up with one in my mind that, that wasn't designed for the military first. And then it's always, it's always the, the military, um, the military firearms then get sporterized later on for, for hunting or, or whatever, you know, down the road, but it started out almost always as, as a military arm of some country. Um, we could go clear back to, you know, match locks, flint locks, percussion, uh, rifles moving on to, um, you know, Colt's revolving pistol or Henry's, uh, repeating rifle, right? Those were developed first of all for, um, for fighting. Those weren't developed first of all for shooting Buffalo or anything like that. The sharps rifle was great on the plains, uh, for the Buffalo hunters, but sharp shooters derived their name from being able to shoot the sharps rifle during the civil war was the all the all the research that i've ever been able to do that everything ties back to there so that being said there is no such thing as a non-military style firearm that that anybody can possess but what i really want to know is if we're going to if we're going to go down that road and say well if it's if it's something that the military uses then civilians shouldn't have it then there can't be any h1 hummers out there there can't be anybody wearing camouflage. There can't be anybody wearing um, mil spec boots, right? I mean, if military style anything isn't for civilians, then nothing should be for civilians. Turn off your internet. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's every almost everything technology that we have was developed buy or for some branch of the military look at all the things that were developed for the astronauts that's usaf no so, more quick plot no velcro no super glue no, no. i mean if it we're just, gonna start down wow. this road the the only thing that makes sense is all or none right we we start picking and choosing then we have to decide who gets to pick and who gets to choose no more dehydrated ice cream we can't, no Tang, but you can't have Gatorade because that was developed, I believe, at the University of Florida. But, uh, yeah, so, again, that's kind of what I want to talk about is how <clears throat> flat-out stupid some of these people sound when they say crap like that. Um, it's just, it, it blows my mind that yeah, Tennessee gun guy out there says the first Jaeger rifled muskets were developed by the Germans for sharpshooting and foraging. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly right. Thanks, dangerous thanks, freedom is right. The uh, dangerous freedom says, let's get to brass tacks. They need us disarmed to have their tyranny. Well, that is something that uh, that's something that I want to talk about in a future a future chat a little bit is some of that stuff too, or or maybe I'll just make it a a short video and post that up. But I have my own thoughts on on things like that. The short version is whether or not um, this generation of politicians really wants to become a dictator. We're always one generation away from, from becoming a dictatorship, right? And even if Bernie or Elizabeth Warren or Biden or Kamala Harris, any of those people, Beto even, um, even if they really do believe the crap that they spew, if they really do believe that they've got the country's best interest at heart, which I don't think they they do have that the country's best interest at heart, but I think they think they do. I think that these people have bought into their own, uh, into their own platforms and they, they believe the stuff that they're saying. So that being the case, what about the next person? Right. What about the next one? What, what's going to happen if Trump doesn't get reelected and we've got a, a Democrat in the white house, a Democrat majority house Heaven forbid the Senate should go Democrat. What's going to happen to us as gun owners with no checks and balances if SCOTUS isn't willing to hear cases very often? What option do we have then? That's the stuff that scares me. And once we get there, what gets us back out of there? Other than folks like you and me, whoever's listening to this right now, folks like you and me, talking about it, spreading the word, having these conversations, not just online. It's easy to have these conversations online because out of six people on this panel, you're seeing one face and five avatars. And I know you know what some of the rest of them look like. It, I'm not saying that anybody's being a coward for showing their avatar. It's a bandwidth thing, okay? My point is that it's easy to have this conversation. What are you eating? Oh, that looks good. I'm gonna I'm gonna call out Kingpin for being a coward because he never shows his face. Well, that's because he's too pretty and he's just doing the rest of us a favor. Yeah, I was gonna say there's extenuating circumstances there. <laughs> that's for if I may, you know, uh, a serious point. Yeah, go ahead. You you know made a comment about you know what if Scotus doesn't hear that's for there's one, possibly two more slots coming up on SCOTUS that are going to have to be filled, depending on how Ginsburg, and I believe, I don't know what the other one is, you know, are going to be coming up. If they can hold out, and let's say Trump loses, if they can hold out long enough to be appointed by the next president, and if, you know, uh, all three portions of the, you know, uh, of the rest of the government are flipped, that means, you know, uh, SCOTUS could flip as well. So, I mean, that's for SCOTUS isn't necessarily a, uh, you know, safety net. Right. Very, very good point. That's kind of what, kind of what I meant. You actually brought up something that I hadn't thought about. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're supposed to have checks and balances, but if, if we get the deck stacked, whether it's Democrat or Republican, I don't think it's good either way. Um, I do hate the fact that with a Republican president and a Democrat House, we can't get anything done. With a Republican Senate and a Democrat House, we can't get anything done because they're too busy bickering about party things and not thinking about their actual job. But again, that's a conversation like we talked about last week. That's the kind of stuff that you and I all need to talk about when we when we shut down our computer when we turn off our phone and we're actually talking to somebody face to face, having a real conversation with a real person, whether we agree, disagree, or agree to disagree, we all need to just raise awareness that um, Congress does, we don't work for them. Congress works for us, whether it's the federal level, the state level, your city council, whoever it is, your county board, your county commissioners, you don't work for them. They work for you. Now, I was thinking about this a couple of days ago, and, and one of the things I wanted to mention tonight about that is we don't just need to remind 
the people in office, who actually works for whom. We need to remind the people that vote, or even more so, the people that don't vote. Everybody needs to remember that those people in office were put there by us. And their, their job is not permanent, unless it's Supreme Court. But their jobs aren't permanent. Even if they don't have term limits, they can be replaced. And the only thing keeping them there is keeping us happy. So there's a there's a fine line between going to Congress to accomplish what you want to accomplish and the things that you promised you would work to accomplish if elected. On the other side of that fine line is doing the things that your constituents tell you to do, expect you to do, want you to do. And whether you agree with them or not, uh, half plus one of your district should be able to tell you what to do because half plus one is all it takes to get you out. So we need to not only remind our elected officials who they work for. Some of them know. Some of them are good people. Not everybody in office is a politician. Some people are good people. But we need to all of us stop and think that we have the power to make things better. We just have to get off our butts and do it. That's that's one of the key things I think that it's the most important is what you said there a second ago about reminding John Q and Jane Q public that the politicians are not our leaders. You know, these aren't, uh, these aren't, you know, our superheroes. These are public servants and this is not a career. This is a temporary public service. I think a lot of people through years and years and years of being fed this nonsense really believe that they lead us and we do what they, you know, they do what's best for us as opposed to we tell them what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need to do what we want them to do or we'll find somebody that will. That's the way it should work. That's the way it's designed to work. Um, They believe that because they've spent 40 years in office. Some of them, (laughs) yes. Because nobody's kicked them out for not doing what they're not only Not only do they believe that, but they've convinced a lot of other people that because they've spent 40 years in office. So again, that, that kind of, that kind of logic or that kind of thinking is partly contagious. Um, So that's why we need to remind not only them, but we need to remind each other, sometimes ourselves. Um, And if I step on toes, I'm not really even all that sorry. That's why I have this chat. I want to step on toes a little bit. I want to make people a little uncomfortable. Um, I, if the shoe fits, then wear it. That's just that's just how it goes. If you're not getting out and voting, if you're not actually doing things to make this a better country, then you're not part of the solution. And if you're doing nothing, you're part of the problem because nothing is what they want us to do. They want us to, to not think that we have the power to do anything. They want us to, to not get anything accomplished. And if we're willing to do nothing, that means they get to do whatever they want. And it's high time that that crap stopped. So that's why I, it, that's why I want to have these conversations. And it's, it's not like you have to tell somebody that they're wrong about guns. It's not like you have to tell somebody that they're wrong about their political convictions. I don't care what side of the aisle you come down on. I don't care what side of the, the liberal to conservative spectrum you land on. If you're in the middle, left, right, it doesn't matter. I think we can all agree that politicians were put in office to represent us, not to lord it over us. We did not want a king. We did not want lords and and uh, royalty. We wanted elected representation, right? That was the whole reason we have a country because we weren't being represented, but we were have we the the colonists were not being represented in England, but they still had to pay taxes anyway. And so uh, they were tired of um, getting treated like they didn't matter. And they started saying, hey, we should do something about this. The king decided to take their guns away. They got shot in the process. And now we have a country. And I know I oversimplified it, but that was mostly what happened. Pretty much sums it up. Yeah. So uh, that's how America got here, kids. I don't know if all of you knew that. 
probably if you're listening to this, you probably already did know that. Um, but the challenge I want to make to people is when we have these these discussions, if you're listening to it and you're sitting there nodding your head, then click the share button. Tell somebody that we had this discussion and send it to them. You can copy this link and put it in a text message, an email. You can share it on Facebook or Twitter. You can share it anywhere. Um, but let's maybe get somebody else to listen to it too. And I'm not just saying that about my channel. That is kind of self-serving and I'll own up to that. But any of these discussions that we have on any of these channels, let's help spread the word. Because if, if you like what you're hearing and you're sitting there saying, yeah, yeah, that's right then there's probably other people that you know that would agree. Let's get the word out to them. Maybe you know somebody that would disagree, but you like the way that Kingpin or Travis or or maybe even I said something or worded something. Share the chats with them. Let's get the people discussing things. I'm tired of people not being willing to talk about things because they're afraid they might piss somebody off or make somebody offended. I'm here to piss people off and offend people. That's, I'm pretty sure at this point in my life, I think that's why God put me here. So uh, I try to shake things up and step on toes a little bit and make people uncomfortable. Here I am. Just can, we, can we take a uh, get off my lawn and push it up to PG-13 then, or what? Uh, Are we allowed one F-bomb per episode? No, probably not one F. We'll I, I wouldn't do it anyway, but I'm just saying. You know, we'll I, probably go PG. Well, here's the thing. What if somebody, like, what if somebody uses it way too early in the chat? Oh yeah, and there's still yeah. people, you know, kids in the room listening. Yeah, no, we we're not going to do that. for it. We're going to keep it classy. Here's the thing: there's a time and a place for everything, <laughs> but I want people to be able to share this without having to uh, say, "Okay, now this is a good chat, but don't listen to it if Grandma's in the room." What about yeah. a get off my darn lawn? Why not? Go dang dumb it. I, I guess I should have warned everybody before I said that. Sorry. Oh, you mother trucker. You potty mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. We could just use substitute bad words instead. I mean, people know what we're saying. It's like we have to, you know. Now, gosh darn it, Travis. Dang numbit, gizzard. <laughs> yeah. You good for nothing, rooster in the hen house. <laughs> you son of a gun, you. What in oh, are, you, what are you guys doing here? Are you mother cluckers swearing now? Or That's what? just scary. We're just taking it to, to the point where we just, you know, yeah, yeah it's a little bit bass backwards, but you know, <laughs> so no, we're still going to keep the get off my lawn podcast, uh, probably PG just so everybody knows. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, um, here, here's the biggest reason why um, it's not even just because people like my mother-in-law or some of my other relatives or some people that knew me, um, as I was growing up, I think do occasionally watch some of these. And number one, I don't want to disappoint them because whether you know this about me or not, I'm a people pleaser and I want to be liked. That's just my personality. I'm here to piss people off and make people like me. I don't know how that works, but here I am. The thing is, um, I find that uh, using vulgarities shows a lack of intelligence and a lack of vocabulary. And if you can get your point across without using um, F bombs and things like that, then I think that you're more likely to be taken seriously because when we talk about something in our, the only thing that we can say is, you know, Oh, F those mother effers or something like that. Who's going to take us seriously. Who's going to listen to us. So that's the honest reason why, um, I don't want this chat to, to devolve into something where anything goes because then we invite that. And, uh, I, I just think that we're all better than that and i expect that the people that are listening are better than that too so in a public setting i mean there's this it's just there's really no arguing it if you're in a public setting you're going to gain people by having a casual conservative conversation if you want to call it that or clean conversation you're you are not going to gather people by dropping the f-bomb every 30 seconds they're just not going to happen. You might find some kids that are like, oh, this is cool. And then once they find out it's not a comedy show, they're going to be like, all right, well, I mean, who cares what they're talking about? They just cuss every other word. Yeah. You know? So, and, and I don't care what people say. You can say anything you want, talk however you want. But if you want to get down to what is and what isn't, what is is a, uh, 
a free floating conversation without a bunch of that will draw people in and a cluster buster of a conversation with every third word a curse word is not going to draw people in yeah it turns me off i don't want to listen to it and that's you know what there's there's people out there that it's fine with them they don't care and there's chats out there that are chock full of bad language and whatnot and hey you know what there's a lid for every pot I'm not looking to reach the people that uh, that are looking for a chat like that. I'm looking to reach, I think, uh, the the ordinary average, you know, every every man, every woman that's out there in America uh, or some other countries. I know this goes out to other countries and gets watched, but uh, but the point is that uh, I think you're right. I think it does kind of turn some people off. I know it turns me off, and so I I try to make. I try to make podcasts that I would want to watch. I look and see what's out there and I look and see what, what's, I don't want to say what's lacking, but I look and see what I wish that some of the others would do. And then I try to kind of fill in that gap a little bit with, with what we do. So blue steel. I don't know if you're, who are you talking to? You like the way I like, I like the way you talk. I think that's what that was. Yeah. Is it the uh, smoothness of the voice or the message? Or is got any of them French yeah. fried potatoes? I reckon. Mm-hmm. I reckon. That's right. After listening to that monologue there, uh, Sand Hills, talking about with quality chats and whatnot, just whatever you do for the love of all the tolling, don't share the uh, dumpster fireside chats. You know, close it okay. better. Is it? Okay. It's good to know. My, my, my personal favorite is Caliber Corner. Those are on at uh, on Mondays now, five o'clock Central Time, PM, five PM Central. So that's my favorite chat out there, but uh, it's one of my favorites anyway. Pickles uh, popping off awful froggy for somebody who's waiting for Wanamaker for their prize pack. You know, here's the thing about Pickle is it's it's not all talk. He's 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 kind of a BA. I'm just saying he's a lover, not a fighter, but. He's a fighter, so don't start anything with him. <laughs> Didn't really mean to kill the chat with that one. Way to go. Okay, <laughs> okay so moving right I along. Trying, <laughs> I was trying to think um, of like a country western song line to throw in there because there's a couple that kind of go off of that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um hey, budget's out there in the chat. Welcome, budget. Um Budget's the same way. He tries to keep everything PG-13 for the most part. Uh, sometimes budget gets a little passionate. Um, I think that uh, I think I started last week's Ride of the People. I think I started watching that, and then I got I was driving. I got where I was going, and I didn't I didn't get to finish it. Uh, budget, but um, I did uh, I did get to see some of the beginning of that. You were talking about um, you were talking about Scotus hearing the the case against the New York City. I think. Uh, you did. You got kind of worked up. But here's the thing. Passion's never a bad thing. And that's, you can call it a double standard if you want to, but but passion's different. And if you're going to punctuate something with the occasional bad word, then that's fine. But if, if you don't know any other words, then I don't really want to talk to you for all that long. That's all. Okay, anyway. Um all right, Calaveras, looks like you are about ready to uh, go do some family stuff and not hang out in the chat. So if there's anything you want to say before uh, before you sign off, we'll give you a chance to say goodnight, Gracie. Okay. Not so much for that. <laughs> goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Man, dramatic outro, huh? Wow. <laughs> he even unmuted himself right before he dropped off. That guy's that, gone. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Well, somebody just got uh, censored, that, I think. That was so obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, not nobody one. but me not can keep one. out of the chat, so I know that wasn't the case. Um, okay, so let's kind of work this way back around to weapons and whatnot. Um, I don't even remember now where we were when we kind of got off track there. Isn't live broadcasting fun? You never know what, you never know what you're going to get. We're kind of like a box of chocolates there. Yes, we are. Um, all right. So just trying to keep up with the chat. 
Let me let me throw that quick plug in real quick. Ten uh, X Shooters was wanted me to get a plug out there for a another Nebraska gun channel that's coming out there. It's uh, Four Hundred Two Outdoors, I think is what he called it. So look for Four Hundred Two Outdoors over there on YouTube. Um, I don't have that comment anymore in the list, so I, I unfortunately I think that's what it was called. So Four Hundred Two is one of the area codes for uh, Nebraska. We only have two. <laughs> It's the one all the cool people live in right now, or they're moving to. Oh, you mean those liberals? Yeah. No, I tend to, <laughs> I, I, I hang with the 308 crowd because we know how to get down. All right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, they are. I grew up in the 402. I live in the 402 now. I've been I've been nah, 308 good. before, so it's all good, too. Yep. yep. 402 Outdoorsman, Stan says. I'm going to search that here real 402 quick. 402 Outdoorsman. All right, let's look for that, cam- that channel and let's look to it. The actual channel. Again, it's somebody, it's another person from Nebraska that has a gun show. There's like three of us now, so that's pretty cool. So obviously we got to go celebrate that, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Steven Kaiser Outdoors is another good one. He's out around, I think, Hyannis. Um, I haven't seen Steven put videos up for a while, but there there for a while he was actually, uh, there it is. I found the channel. Uh, Let me go in here and subscribe real quick and then share the link bear with my computer. I'm still trying to get my tab to open up here yeah let's see if we can get copy hey looky there paste I almost know what I'm doing almost Jay Brown's in Grand Island he's representing that 308 there we go. go. You 308 guys. Jay, we need to meet up, man. We need to we need to get some chow or go do some shooting or something. They got a nice uh shooting complex out there. They got a couple couple nice ranges. From Grand Island or in Grand Island, Jay Brown. Jay Brown is also my <coughs> new um Patreon patron too. I hope it's okay if I say that. Cool. So we've been talking on Facebook and I just now put two and two together that Jay is who I – yeah, Nebraska does have an Island Seven Wonders. Would you believe that? We've got several. Yes, there's lots of them on the Platte River, surprisingly. it's uh, Yeah, we have water, lots of water. There's even there's even islands in the uh, Missouri River that yep. are claimed by Nebraska. In fact, if you've never heard of Chief Standing Bear – you need to uh, do some research on Chief Standing Bear. He's a Ponca chief that was, uh, they were relocated to Oklahoma, as so many were. And when his son died, he promised his son that he would take him back up to their original tribal lands and bury him um, up there along the, the Niagara River, which is where the Ponca had originally uh, had been. And so they left the reservation, walked all the way up to northern Nebraska and got arrested for it. And they had a trial. Um, they even made a they even made a movie, which I think you can still find it called The Trial of Standing Bear. They filmed it here in the state with some local actors and extras. Um, it's a cool movie. I remember watching it when I was a kid. And uh, they actually got uh, the the Ponca won their court case and they were awarded some land, including an Island in the, the Niagara river that they were able to uh, bury the chief's son there on the Island. Um, The channel has rerouted itself, I think a time or two since then. So I don't know if that Island is still an Island to this day. I couldn't tell you, but it's a cool story. So check out chief standing bear. They just unveiled a statue of chief standing bear in the, uh, in the Nebraska Capitol building, they have a hall of basically a hall of statues. I think they have a different term for it, but they just dedicated that statue this last week, and it's a cool looking statue. Is he standing? He is indeed standing. Is he bear? <laughs> Not bear. <laughs> there a bear coming up on it because we don't have bears in Nebraska, but that's that's cool anyway. So, yeah. oh, I thought I was thinking another kind of bear, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's not bare. He's made of bronze, but I believe he is clothed. <laughs> so Tom Cruise was not in the movie. Was Roe Cruise in the movie? Um, I don't think so. It was filmed most of it was filmed at Fort Hartsuff, which is near Burwell, Nebraska, which is a cool place. If you're in central Nebraska and you've never been to uh, Fort Hartsuff, you need to go 
check that place out. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of history there. Come check my place out first because I'm in central Nebraska, and then you can go up there. You stop by. We'll get some lunch, get some tacos. You're not really that close to Burwell. No. But I'm in central Nebraska, though, so, I mean, most people go oh, right by. They don't even realize kind of. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Rough I-80, man. Central Take Nebraska right. is a big area, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not like saying in Texas. I mean, you know, everything in no. Texas is, is three or four hours apart, but yeah, one more. But it's still there's a lot of Nebraska's bigger than people realize, I think. So so anyway. Okay, so back to back to some of our other chat there. 402 outdoors when I did get your channel plugged out there in the chat. So uh, make sure you go check out 402 outdoorsman. Let's bump up the uh subscribers. It, it looks like 19. Let me refresh. Have we gone over 19 yet? Has anybody else clicked on that one? Go find that link and click on it and give Nebraskans some love. We're out here just doing our best. We don't even have electricity or plumbing, but we're making YouTube videos. Still at 19. Get out there and subscribe, everybody. You can do it right while you're listening. Okay. So it's almost 10 o'clock. We might not have to go super late tonight. I got to get up and go to work early tomorrow. Um, because I'm taking half the day off so we can go to Omaha. I don't know if anybody knows who Chad Prather is, the political cowboy, but he is uh, doing some stand up in Omaha tomorrow night, and we've got tickets. He actually so. gave a shout out to Lincoln on his show. Did you hear that? Or he kind of gave a little bit of a shout out on I the did. bullying episode? They what do you say that Wichita the... didn't sell out, yet Nebraska had a pretty good crowd? And there was Lincoln a blizzard sold going out, on. and people showed up <laughs> in, in a blizzard to in go a see blizzard. Him. Yes. That's an Nebraskan for you. Damn it, we're going. We bought tickets. I don't care if I can't see in front of the hood of my car. It's a blizzard. It's never stopped us before. No, no. I mean, like, you know. We're the people that when there's a tornado siren going off, we're all standing on the porch looking for it. Not what do you class. guys really call a blizzard out there? Because I know, like, 17 feet of snow is, like, an average weekend for you guys. <laughs> That's true. Well, actually, right where, where I'm at, we don't get – we might only get, like like, maybe five or six feet in a winter. Of snow, but it, what we get is very intense, and it lasts usually like overnight. So it's a lot. It's wind. Wind is what the worst thing is. I mean, it's it's just the blowing snow and ice. You know, that's just like brutal, like 40, 50 mile an hour winds that go for hours. So that I mean, yeah, it wide out. You know, you can't see anything. You can't drive. You can't really go anywhere. Yeah. But yeah, we don't. We don't. I mean, where I'm at, we don't tend to get just feet and feet of snow like you see up in Minnesota and stuff like that. We don't get that. Although I don't know, they're talking this this winter might be rough. Be a doozy. It's they're talking. We're we're talking that maybe we'll get some snow beginning of next week even. Oh man! So yeah, it's gonna drop down yeah. in the forties, I think, out here. That's just supposed to get down to like fifty five here tonight, which is I can't yep. wait. It's freaking awesome. I can't wait for something like that. See, so. this is what Nebraska people talk about. We just talk about the weather, Husker weather, football, and not the much else There's to nothing. talk about. That's it. That's pretty much it. Tim Foley says not to tell anyone he lives in Lee. So, uh, North I'm of Columbus. Assuming, I'm assuming that's by it. Columbus. It is. How about Creston? Yeah, it's between Creston. Uh, and I used to, to kind of old stomping grounds out there. I used to go get lost out in Lee. I can't really comment it's on a it, but very nice. Look. I've never fished it, but there's a very nice looking uh, lake right there by Lee. The uh, first time I went snipe hunting, I was out in Lee, and I honestly did not know how to get home. Yeah, I. Yeah. Well, I don't think you can get home. Columbus from there. Not in the yeah, I, I, we walked track. and we walked and we we saw lights. We thought, well, if we go to the lights, we're either gonna find like a co-op or civilization. Yeah. And uh yeah. <laughs> so if somebody wants to tell you they want to go snipe on, just make sure you research that a little bit before you go know what you're getting yourself into. In fact, I'm thinking about starting an outfitter service for anybody that's never been snipe hunting. Oh, really? out Nebraska, and we will take you. It's an experience yes. you not forget the rest of your life. Everybody should go once. After we're hundred percent eco friendly, um, we get it's, back and we're done with yep. that. We may yep. even go cow tipping. Yes, yes, we're yes. Bored here without electricity, so that's what we do: is cow tipping we, and snipe hunting. That's pretty much uh, cows and tip them over. Yep, yep. There you go. So we're gonna have people believe in that. Yeah, so I mean, people that, that believe that. So you got to, I mean, you really snipe. It's a very, it's a very narrow, you know, time frame to go after them when you can go. And when you can finally find them, 
it, you have to go. You don't have a choice. You just got to get everybody to take them with you, you know? They're scarce. There's not as many. Um, no. I do have some vac- vacation time coming up, so I could probably yeah. uh, book a flight. We'll take you. We'll take you. Uh, uh, he has a question for you, King Trap. On snipe, anyway. Was there a second time snipe hunting? Oh, you he went a second time. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, no. I mean, considering that my parents thought I didn't survive the first trip because I didn't make it home by breakfast, which is their only rule. Um, you know, I did find a payphone like at noon the next day. So uh, it's funny how how few cars are actually out there in the middle of nowhere when you need help. I'm just gonna say that. The only <laughs> okay. Here's the way that works. There won't be a car for miles. There won't be a car no. for hours. No. And then you have to take a leak. And you're taking well, a leak dark. I don't worry about that. The road, in the dark, yeah. on the other yep. side of your car, and here comes headlights over the hill. Yep. It happens every stinking time. Yep. That's also when you see the biggest deer or the biggest tom turkey is when you are uh, answering nature's call and you don't have your rifle or your shotgun close to hand. So that's just how that works. God has a sense of humor. When you go snipe hunting, you have to be sure to wear blaze orange too, because the snipes, they, they don't, you know, they're colorblind. So you want to wear blaze orange. Yeah. You have a lot, lots of blaze orange. Like you got to get full on, you know, it's just easier to stay safe. Yeah, it is. And your favorite camel pattern too. But you can mix them. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. It's yeah, it's yeah. Camel. I mean, they're not. I've had. We should have that discussion sometime. Is it okay to mix real tree and mossy oak? Well, I mean, if you're on a budget, sometimes you can't get a matching set at Walmart when they're on clearance. I mean, True. you know, really, I I'm not going to say you shouldn't because I mean, a lot of people sport that around here, and that's totally acceptable. I mean, it's you know, it's like wearing, you know, brown socks and shoes with a black belt. It just it shouldn't happen, but it does. You know. You can't um, do no, nah, I, I don't recommend it. I, Oops. You should always make sure that the at least the socks, shoes, and belt match, regardless of what you do. And you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day. Is that what it is? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Can, can, can like someone explain that, that one to me? Because I've never been able to understand the whole white after Labor Day thing. I don't. It's racist. That's all I know. So I don't. Oh, okay. I don't really get well, into it. I, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 I mean, that's all I need to know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it probably has some like Victorian tradition or something ridiculous. So I don't, we should explore that, you know. <laughs> but as for the camo, I I can't say that you should mix camo patterns. I, I think that you should keep it consistent all the way across the board, especially and it, it needs to be suited for your environment. Because I mean, mossy oak in Nebraska, eh, my, you know. My favorite camo pattern is brown duck coveralls and red mm-hmm. flannel jacket. Yeah, it's a work for Grandpa. <laughs> he never had trouble putting food on the table. Yep. And yeah, I got hat, pictures of I got pictures of my ear flops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got pictures of my uncles when they'd go out hunt. They come back and show you know they they're all holding up their 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 you know their their harvest and stuff, and they all got friggin' blue coveralls on. I mean, these are black and white photos, but coveralls, fedoras, yep. like unbuttoned shirt and a shotgun in one hand and ducks in the other. I mean, it's you know they made it work. That's right. They didn't have That's Gore-Tex. Right. They didn't complain. A true ninja can blend into any environment. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> or they would just shoot the ducks before the ducks saw them. Whatever happened first, you know. I mean, it. You know, that's yep. true. That's true. Yeah. Well, you got to watch those ducks. They'll shoot back if they see you first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Okay. So, anybody have anything they want to add about weapons? I mean, we could go through a list of. You know, there's there's really nothing that can't be used for a weapon. One of the things that I guess I, I was going to bring up, and I didn't get time because of reasons, but I didn't get the the actual statistics looked up. But I do know that there are more people killed in our country every year by blunt trauma than there are by gunshots, um, especially those scary rifles that people are talking about banning. Um, uh, Knives. More people are stabbed than shot every year. More people are bludgeoned to death. More people are killed, I believe, with hands and feet than and with rifles. And, and to, to clarify, we're talking violent deaths. We're not talking a, a hammer fell off of a ladder at the job site and yeah, killed somebody. Yeah, not accidental death. Yeah, no, this is Murder. intentional. Yeah, exactly. Homicides. 
Yes, dangerous freedom's right. A fist kills more than rifles. Um, and those numbers are out there, and, and uh, they're not hard to find. Um, I don't know what the most recent year that's been compiled. But any anyone that thinks that gun control is about guns is, either hasn't been paying attention or is just buying what they're being fed. Um, because gun control has never been about the guns. It's always been about the control. And that's how it started in 1934. And it's just gotten worse as we've, as we've gone along. Um, Travis T wants to know if it's a gun death, if you beat someone with a high point, it's the only way you can actually hurt somebody with a high point is to club them with it. So I still think it counts as blunt trauma. No, that would have to be a sky CPX too. A high point actually works. Yeah. Here's the thing. Guns have never killed. Well, guns very rarely kill anybody. It's usually a bullet that does it. So it may be a gun death, but it's not a gunshot. So more people are killed by blunt trauma than are shot with rifles. More people are killed by hammers. Uh, or excuse me, more people are killed by, by fists and hands than are shot with rifles. More people are killed by blunt trauma than are shot. Um, in homicides. So that's one of the biggest problems I have with red flag laws too. Because if somebody's a danger to themselves or to others and you take away their guns, what have you actually done to keep anybody safe? You haven't. You've only taken away their ability to shoot somebody and you've only taken away their legal ability to shoot somebody because anybody who's willing to pull a trigger and take a life, we all know that if they can't legally obtain a gun, there's no other way to get it. Just like prescription drugs, there's no way to get oxy if you don't have a prescription. So that's, again, one of the biggest issues I have with red flag laws is we're removing firearms, but we're not taking away any other ability that they could hurt themselves or hurt others. In fact, we're not even taking away the most likely way that they can hurt themselves or others statistically speaking. So why would anybody be okay with this? I don't get it. I think it has to do with power and control. That's what I think. I mean, considering that, you know, less than what, 3% was it two and a half percent of all gun deaths are caused by rifles and that's it. Everything else is handguns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all yeah, rifles that's, combined, not just ARs. That's, that's all not just ARs. That's all rifles. Yeah. Also, yeah. The yeah. AR is now the most commonly used rifle in America. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense. Again, it goes yep. back to um, soldiers always develop, not always, most soldiers develop a love for the rifle that they use from their military time. So back when, um, when the 03 Springfield was the best battle rifle out there, or the Mauser 98 was the best battle rifle out there for the Europeans, Look how many people still to this day use a derivative of one of those two bolt actions, right? But they were military guns before they were hunting guns. Then you move over to the M1 and look how many World War II and Korean War vets swear by an M1 or an M1A at this point. Um, then we move over to from Vietnam on, it's been the M16 or the M4. And look how many veterans swear by the, the AR pattern rifles. Because it's what they learned. They learn how to take the thing apart and put it back together, blindfolded in their sleep behind their back, almost to that extent. They know the rifle inside and out. They know how it works. They know what makes it tick. And they also, a lot of these people are depending on that particular rifle to get them home safe. And so they trust it with their lives, literally. Why would they not love that rifle? It's been the, the rifle that we've used the longest out of any period in our military history. Why wouldn't there be more of them than any other rifle? So, again, it's the most commonly used or the most commonly owned rifle out there. It is we can't ban these because they're in common use. We have laws that stop such a thing. I don't know why we have to go back and remind people of what we already have on the books. 
but again, we've got laws like don't kill somebody or else you go to prison and you may lose your life. So we kind of have to remind people of that too. We already have laws that say um, you can get a restraining order against somebody. And those aren't working. So because people can't follow the laws, the solution is to stack more laws that they're not going to follow. It, I've never understood the concept. Vash Matrix has a really good stat out there. This is 92.2% of guns used illegally are illegally obtained. Yes. So we, want to, we want to ban all the guns, even though they're used illegally by people that aren't going to follow the law to obtain them anyway. It makes no sense at all. Obviously, there's got to be some kind of a hidden agenda, you know? Uh, Vash Matrix, do you have the the link to that? Um, That's a good stat, man. I want to know where that comes from. I trust you. I trust that you've researched it, but I want to actually be able to share that um, and and share share the not only the statistic but where it came from. So if you could send that to us, um, watch the red elephants with Vincent James. All right, I'll have to check that out because um, that's the kind of stuff. Again, we've talked about this before. What's up, Ghost? We've talked about this before. It's not just about statistics and facts and figures, right? Because feelings don't care about the facts. But at the same time, there's no reason to hide from the facts. There's no reason not to bring those up. We just can't we just can't throw it in people's face and go, aha, fact, I've got this. You you're wrong, I'm right. That's not the way to act. But that doesn't mean that we can't talk about the facts. That doesn't mean that they're not right. That doesn't mean that that we shouldn't share those facts. We just have to we have to have a conversation with somebody to where they're more receptive to actually caring, right? Um, if they think that we're coming at them with facts, then they don't care. But if if they think that we're honestly wanting to show them something that maybe they didn't realize before, and we can show them not only the numbers, but where they come from, and that it's not us making it up, it's, it's DOJ or FBI or CDC or whoever, um, whoever came up with it, then um, I think that those facts can go a long ways to to helping prove our point. They just can't be our point. Yeah, the link shows 90%, which is still staggering. I mean, that's still more than, you know, yeah. it's a DOJ uh, study from 20, 2018, 2019, something like that. Is that? Oh, and DOJ Bureau of Jur Justice Statistics reports that in 2016, Let's see, 287,400 people were in prison for committing crimes while in possession of a firearm, and 90% of those firearms were obtained illegally, and then it breaks down the um, the percentages. So they weren't supposed to have them anyway if they took them from a, a family member or got them from a family member. So 56% were stolen, 6% stole it from a scene of a crime, 7% got it off the street, 43% uh, bought it from an underground market. And 25% had obtained it from a family member or friend or as a gift, which again, you should really be thinking about how you keep your firearms around. If you've got kids or family, or you've got family that might be a little bit questionable about their past choices or their current behavior, you know, you need to be a responsible firearm owner. I mean, it's that simple, you know? At the same time, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, what I worry about is some of the proposed legislation that says that if you don't have your gun locked up, then, then you're liable for what happens with it. And that's, that's another sore subject with me. Um, because why am I responsible for not locking up my gun or not locking my vehicle? And I know, again, I'm going to make people uncomfortable and I, uh, I, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not, making light of anybody's situation, anybody's experience. And I am not, um, I'm not trying to say that this is not important. That's the opposite of my point. Um, we tell people that if, if a young lady is attacked and assaulted, it doesn't matter what she was wearing. It doesn't matter where she was walking. It doesn't matter who she was with. She's not the one that did something bad. And it's and I'm not arguing with this. This is this I agree with this 110%. This is how I feel. She's not to blame. Okay? 
The bad person made a choice to do a bad thing. They are 100% responsible for that action. No matter what kind of attire there was, it, it, this is not something that is provoked. Okay. Now let's put that back to a gun, you know, in a gun rack in a pickup and the door's not locked. That means that the person who owns the gun did not do a bad thing. It's not their fault that somebody else broke the law, took something that wasn't theirs, and then took a life that wasn't theirs to take. So my point is not that that we should make light or, or um, take any of the gravity away from sexual assault. My point is that let's make everything by the same standards. It is not the victim's fault when they're attacked, and it is not the victim's fault when their property is stolen. So I agree that if I don't want my stuff stolen, whether it's a gun or my phone or my wallet, jewelry, cash, anything like that, my wife's purse, we don't leave that lying around in the open in an unlocked vehicle, right? Because we don't trust people to always make the right decision. We lock that up, we hide it, you know, cover it up or something to where nobody knows it's there. And 99 out of 100 people walking by, 999 out of 1,000 people walking by aren't going to break the window when they see that the door's locked just to see if there might be something in the car. So that, to me, is being responsible, like you said. At the same time, if somebody does take it upon themselves to steal what's not theirs, then there should not be any liability for... Uh, what happens with that stolen property, it should not come back on the the rightful owner of the property. The reason I'm saying that, Travis, it's not to attack you or what you said. The reason I'm saying that is there's a press conference coming up. I just read about it tonight in Lincoln, Thursday morning, 10 o'clock. The, the Lincoln mayor is going to have a press conference and uh, Nebraska Firearm Owners Association has a call to action out on their Facebook page saying, let's all go, let's all tell Lincoln's mayor that uh, he shouldn't force um, he shouldn't force some of these regulations upon gun owners. You shouldn't have to get a permit just to have your gun locked up uh, in the town of Lincoln and some of the other stuff. And I, I can't quote the proposed legislation um, without seeing it in front of me, which I don't have it. But anybody who is... Uh, in the Lincoln area or is willing to drive to Lincoln Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, um, go to the Nebraska Firearm Owners Association uh, Facebook page. And it might even be on the website. I'll have to check um, for those of you that aren't Facebookers. If, if you're not on Facebook and you want the info, email me, sandhillsshooter at gmail.com. Sandhills ends in an S, shooter starts with an S. So make sure that you get both of them in the email address, sandhillsshooter at gmail.com and I'll get you the info. Um, so I'm not actually blasting you. I'm just saying that uh, there's a there's a difference between responsible gun ownership and again, having regulations forced upon us that we don't need. Dude, I agree completely. There's so many things in my house that could be used as a weapon. I don't want to be held liable for any of it. I got yep. a chainsaw in the garage. I got a baseball bat out in the garage. I got golf clubs on my tennis rack you could probably bludgeon a small child with a tennis rack and i mean anything could be used as a weapon you know and i don't want to be held liable for any of it i agree totally yep exactly i just wanted to throw that out there that no no dude i, I wasn't totally. disagreeing and i wasn't yeah. i wasn't yeah i'm not putting travis on blast i know there's a lot of travites out there that oh yeah i know we're pretty <laughs> right, we're exponentially multiplying so yeah you gotta watch out ghost but, you're uh, right i out there in the chat ghost says it helps not to have a bunch of gun stickers on your car if you have guns in there um <laughs> I, uh, every time we were in traffic or we, we drive by a car park on the curb and there's a, a Ruger sticker or, uh, um, Browning. <laughs> Browning. well, I've got a buck mark and I generally don't have firearms in my vehicle except for on my person. Yeah. Yeah. So buck marks are a little a different because, because even posers like me have, I have a buck mark because I have a Browning rifle and I love Browning. Um, but, uh, I've got a buck mark and I've got a praying cowboy on the back of my vehicle, but, if you see the Ruger stickers, the Glock Perfection stickers, the the USCCA sticker, Magpul, um, Magpul, yeah, Magpul, any of these things that you know they they come with, you know whatever firearm or, or accessory that you order, then every time I see a vehicle with one of those, I tell my wife, all right, well if 
if it hits the fan, then that's the vehicle that we're breaking the back window out of and going through for, for guns. And she laughs. We laugh about it. We keep we keep going on. Um, a Threeper logo is also one. Dangerous Freedom, sorry to say, but that generally screams, hey, I probably have guns. Well, Leo Red said, if you have a high point sticker on your car, you have nothing to worry about. And see, that's thinking negatively. I think if you have the high point sticker on your car, they might break in and leave you some money. It's actually, or they might just leave you a decent gun. You know it's going to be in there. That is the original truck gun. So why, it, there will be one there, you know? Yep, that, that's true. Chainsaw bayonet. I think that, see, now I think chainsaw bayonets, um, I'm kind of looking for one for my shield. So I think every gun should have a chainsaw bayonet. And a, and a fully operational battle station Death Star. So you should put like an electric knife on your, uh, on your <laughs> shield, like, like, put, like get a Picatinny mount for it and put that on there. Like for electric, an handgun, electric, uh, like a carving knife, something. like you use for Thanksgiving to cut up the turkey and stuff, you know, <laughs> or cut up the ham. Is that a fully automatic knife then? That's a fully semi-automatic or fully auto. It depends on how, is that, is that like a military yeah. style assault carving knife? I'm I don't sure know. it's got some origins. It's somewhere, an assault style knife. That, it's got a blade. And the origin of the blade is obviously for, you know, cutting yes. human flesh and its origin. So it has to have some kind of military application. Yeah. So surely a fully semi-automatic kitchen knife would be, you know, do they make those rechargeable? That's a cool idea. <laughs> I'm going to look that up. Is there a rechargeable I, carving I knife? Kinda I kind of want to do that and then have just like a 300 foot extension cord hanging off of it. Like well, you wrapped can, around myself like a bandolier. Yeah, that, that'd be what, us, what something us Nebraskans would do. That's that's redneck. I, it, but I, I, I think we need, to a, we need a edge of my property with that. I could get to any corner of my property, I think, with a 300 foot cord. I might have to leave the doors open on the breezeway and run back and forth through the house, but I'm pretty sure I could get it done. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm going to need video. I mean, Kind of want to do you know, the car, the carving knife there. Ooh, we do have okay, there's an electric one. I mean, think about that as a close quarters combat weapon, a rechargeable uh, carving knife could be deadly. I mean, you fire that sucker up, man, you're going through bone and sinew like it's nobody's business. So, I think that this chat they, may they be have going down a, a road that we they have them <laughs> as, as a defensive weapon, defensive uh protection device. A That's a standoff tool, man, right there. Personal safety device. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton Beach makes one for twenty two dollars. There you That's go. Awesome. I'm gonna have to check it out rail. next time. I next time I go. Yeah. There. Might be in Shields tomorrow. I'll have to see what they have for like electric fillet knives and what the price is. Because yeah. I could have like the you know the standard fillet knife and then the the uh, fully automatic assault style fillet knife. Mm -hmm. I might have to take some pictures. In FDE, got to have it in flat dark earth, of course. You know. Of course. Yeah, of course, yes, or or cryptic. If it's cryptic, oh, yes, it's cool yes, too. yes, yes. Yep. So I might even Cerakote mine. So cool, cool, cool. Well, we're kidding, by the way, guys. You should not put an electric carving knife on any firearm. I mean, I because <laughs> you might hit it accidentally and kind of nick your Achilles. You know, I you'd want to be really careful. You know, you know <laughs> we need disclaimers before now, every episode. Now, of this now I'm curious, though. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a Picatinny rail on the airsoft PPQ. Yeah. So we can we can work something up with the old airsoft gun, and it's not actually mm -hmm. a firearm, and it's got the yellow barrel muzzle, so everybody knows that this is just an airsoft gun. It's not put a uh, pressure switch on it, so like you can squeeze it a certain way, and you get the blade to start shaking. Yeah, I don't know. There's something to that. I have to uh, I have to see what I can do now and, and make some sort of a farce video. See how many people actually believe it, and if I can get orders for it, then I'm going to start shipping them and sending them out. Do April April Fools, do an nah. April Fools video for, yeah. No, I think what we need to do is the Glock um, knife. Yeah. Well, what we need to do is make like a package deal, um, like inside of a violin case. You can get, you know, the <laughs> the airsoft PPQ with the assault style uh, fillet knife bayonet. Yes. And the 338 Nerf pool rifle and. Mm -hmm. You've pretty much got yourself. You've got Zombie yourself. Zombie right there, um, You're ready to go. Protect your whole house is yep. unprotected from uh, wannabes and posers everywhere. I hope AWAG doesn't hear me call airsoft people wannabes and posers. <laughs> Mall ninjas. I would knock it till I try it though. Airsoft looks like it might be kind of fun. 
You know, I, I think it has its merits. I think that you can really use it for some good force on force training. Um, not with this gun because it's a, it, it's it's not semi-auto. You know, you have to cycle the slide after every shot. But if you had an actual expensive semi-auto airsoft gun, I could see that being uh, something that would would really get the adrenaline going, get the blood pumping on a little force on force. You don't have to have a specific. You know, you don't have to go to a range, go to a shoot house. You don't have to have, um, you know, ear pro and all that kind of stuff. Just keep your eyes safe and and uh, and away you go. And I don't know. I'm I'm not saying that airsoft is worthless. I'm saying that there's a lot of mall ninjas that that get airsoft gear and think that they're you know all tactical. But you ever watch the videos where they have actual SAS or SWAT people take on airsofters? Do they watch no. those videos? Like, no, they eat them up alive. Oh, I'm they sure. Completely, they just there's one dude. They had an SAS guy, British SAS officer, take on. He basically took out the entire squad before they got. Him. I think he killed 25 of theirs before they got him. <laughs> oh, he was plucking them off. I mean, it was just it was ridiculous. That you know, dude's forgotten more about force on force than CQB the entire building himself. He didn't even need that. <laughs> it was <laughs> hilarious. I mean, he just whooped everybody's rear man. Well, yes, yeah, I, I mean, I'm gonna say I'm into the airsoft tough, videos, but it popped up on my feed one time. I'm like, oh, I gotta see this, you know. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Now, it's not necessarily a deadly weapon, but airsoft does have its merits. Um, the cool thing about the stuff like from was it Umarex, Umarex? Yeah, Umarex. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, they these things are these things are molded to where they look almost identical. They'll fit the same holsters, everything. Uh, that's oh, yeah, why we bought this one. Oh, you know, they make BB guns that look like Glocks and SIGs. They're actually authorized by Walther Glock and SIGs. Yeah, they're officially like licensed yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what's cool about these is that um, you can get the same um, the same practice, you know, with, with this. And if you if you don't live near a range, you don't have the option to go do actual live fire with your actual carry gun all the time. At least you can practice the fundamentals. You can practice marksmanship, you know, sight alignment trigger squeeze breathing all that kind of stuff and it creates muscle memory i'm not saying that dry fire is a, a substitute for live fire but it's a great um it's a great way to at least try to keep some of the rust off i think yeah um so not everybody's just naturally good at shooting not everybody can just pick up a gun and and you know get hits on target right away first time um, most of us have to develop the skill and, and practice it. And if, if you had to practice to get good, then you have to practice to stay good. So, and then there's my wife who just naturally picks stuff up and she can't even close one eye and she can put shots on target better than I can. So, which is why I don't get very lippy with her. Same here. <laughs> You don't get lippy with my wife? That's nice. No, no, no. I'm saying when my <laughs> wife and I go shooting and stuff, I, I don't like to take her shooting because she usually is is you know much more yeah much more focused and concentrated on on shooting better than me. So it's I'm yeah. I'm not embarrassed. I I have no nah. shame in saying that my nah. wife's a better shot than I am. I don't care. I'm proud of her because I'm not terrible. I'm not the best shot, but I'm not terrible. And if she's as good as me or better, then she's good. So well, don't don't you want that kind of backup when 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 you get into SHTF? I mean, you want that, you know. That's that's good. Let she'll she'll get if I don't get the person, she will. So that, that's know. why I've actually considered. Um, we need to figure out for sure if she wants to have the PPQ be her carry gun or the Glock. And right now, she's said she could kind of go either way. She's about as comfortable either way with with both of them. We did get the Talon grips put on the PPQ. I think it makes a difference. Um, she didn't necessarily say she could really feel a whole lot of difference, but I think that I've got more control on the, the Walther with the Talon grips on there. Um, Get her a bigger person. Let her do like a, like a micro Roni or whatever, you know, the, the yeah. little Glock that's got the little slip in chassis that you put it in and you make it into a, a pistol or an SBR. Shoulder it, yeah. Get a little seven and a half inch 300 blackout pistol. That probably fit in a purse just fine. You know, she doesn't have that big of a purse though. Well, it might be time but to invest in a bigger one. But there may be one coming, uh, supposed to be delivered tomorrow uh -oh. Uh -oh. that we can test out. We've actually got, um, we tried the, what's it called? The purse, purse mate from Crossbreed. I can't think of what it's called. It's a little, it's in the box over here behind me. We're going to send it back because it's not what we expected it to be. But it's, it's just a piece of, uh, 
of polymer that's it's flat. It kind of looks a little bit like a bookend. Um, mm -hmm. It's about this long. It's about this tall, and then there's a 90 degree angle, and it's got a flat base, so it you know it stands up. So it's kind of kind of shaped like this, and then this face of it, the vertical face um, on the inside of the bend, has um, has Velcro on it, the loop side of Velcro, and then it's got the holster, like most purse holsters. If you've ever seen one, there's loop Velcro inside the pocket, and then the holster itself has the hook side, and you can reposition it. So your gun's at the perfect angle for your draw. And you can do all that. And we did get the uh, the PPQ holster and, and mag holster um, when we ordered it. The retention is not what I expected. There, there's no retention on that holster. Um, the gun, even unloaded with no magazine in it, the gun won't stay in it when it's turned upside down. So I don't see how secure that is in a purse if it would get you know knocked over or whatever. Your purse goes tumbling. Mm -hmm. Your gun could slip out of your holster and still be lying just loose inside the pocket um, of your purse. Then I, I don't know that that's, I don't know if it just wasn't molded tight enough or what. We're just going to return it, um, go back to a, a different program. Cause it, again, it's, it's too big for the purses that she has. She's going to have to go with like a big old grandma purse in order to fit it properly. Um, and the PPQ just, there's no two ways about it. It's a, a big gun um it doesn't compare with the glock 19 it more compares with the glock 17 with trying to conceal mm. it so okay it's a little bit different dimensions but um it just seems it's, it's a little bit my, my glock's easier to conceal than the walther is if i've ever if i've ever uh carried i've carried the walther just a couple times in the holster just to kind of get used to it and it it does print a little bit more um, Kingpin, I think you are maybe about ready to, uh, check out. So we're going to let you say goodnight, Gracie, and hope you don't disappear. No, I'm going to stay away from the eject button until I say, <laughs> uh, check out my plugs and I'm going to plug my shout out. So those are really all really awesome. Uh, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate the conversation. Everybody on the panel, everybody on the chat, have a wonderful night and, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here, Kingpin. We'll see you next week for the Get Off My Lawn podcast. Peace, guys. Go check out Kingpin's Better, channel. He's got some cool stuff up there. Heck yeah. Sandy, All I'm right. going to go and drop out too while we're at it. It's okay. past my bedtime, so it's school night. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I appreciate the invite. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you uh, again next week on here. And, and that's Absolutely. it. So check out my channel, TravisP11, over on YouTube. Go check it out. Check out Caliber Corner Mondays yep. now, 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Um, are you going to keep going with the uh, different calibers, or are you going to do one of those every now yeah. and then? No, or... we're 6, six Central, 6 p.m. Central. Oh, 6 Central, not 5 Central. Yeah, no, we're doing 6, so I have a little more time when I get home from work. Um, okay. Yeah, we're going to focus on I – mean, we've done discussions on – some of the wildcat calibers and some of the more unusual calibers in the past, we're going to, we've taken it back to bread and butter. So we did five, five, six last week. I think we'll do seven sixty two by 51 this week, three Oh eight. And the next cool. week, maybe do seven sixty two by 39 and just kind of go. And then we'll go through the list. I know a lot of guys are asking about the six fives, six, five Creed more and what six, five Grendel and things like that. So we'll, we'll talk about those too. So yeah. Yeah. Two forty three, two seventy, man. Some of the magnums. Like I want to, I want to. Yeah. I want to, even if I can't be on the chat, I want to watch the one where you talk about like Elmer Keith developing 357. And then, you know, after that came the 44 and, and I yeah. can't wait till you get into like the, the really big ones, like the 500 Smith and Wesson Magnum and the story behind that from Hornady. And I, I enjoyed it for me to learn the history too, about the caliber. And so I really like that aspect of it. And I try to get just a quick summary of that, the history of that round and share and, that with the and audience. You get into a little bit. Those Smith and Wesson yeah. X frame. Uh, calibers. I, I really look forward to seeing those too. So I, that's right on, man. Just to put a bug in your ear. Hopefully, you'll do the magnums and the uh, the the five hundred and the four sixty magnums. Right on, so. man. Well, I'll make sure we talk about five seven, so that way you can you know you can learn about that PS ninety. Put a down payment on. Oh, your wife doesn't know about that, does she? Shh. Oh, I'm messing with you guys. Relax, relax. <laughs> relax. Five seven. Are you? That's a useless round. Okay. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. All right, I'll talk to you later, man. Y'all have a good night. Night, Travis. Okay, take care, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Later. All right. Um, and I think we're just going to kind of wind it down. So um, we won't kick you guys off the chat yet, but uh, 
Gizzard, do you have anything you want to add? We'll let you go ahead and say good night. And I got to get up early for work too, so we won't hang around too late tonight. Gizzard might be already asleep, or he didn't hear me say his name, or he's no, asleep. Actually, I was muted. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm just. Um, um, yeah, I got a video I released today on some uh, backup iron sites. Make sure and check it out. Foul Territory, Friday nights, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. And uh, thanks for having me, as always. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. Throw a little chat out there as I'm listening and typing at the same time. Um, all right, obnoxious one. We will let you... Anything else you want to throw out there as far as any of the things we've talked about tonight or anything that we haven't that you wanted to throw out part of this chat? Somebody yeah. just told me to quit my job. I don't well, know why. I, I don't I don't know why either. I, well, but somebody earlier said not to quit my day job because apparently I suck at <laughs> podcast hosting. <laughs> just wait till you hear me sing, then you'll really tell me not to quit my day job. <laughs> All right, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead, obnoxious. Yeah, just uh, check out my channel. Check out my Instagram. Um, I've been a little slow on getting videos out lately. I just haven't been feeling it, but I'm going to try and get one out. Um, go check out A Bloke's Two Cents on YouTube. He's doing a uh, he's doing a giveaway to help out a buddy of his whose daughter came down with a pretty devastating disease. They've got some pretty big medical bills. Um, I'm probably going to do a video, film it maybe tonight or tomorrow, and put that up, put a link down to his his channel and the GoFundMe in there to get that get that out. I think he's running it through um, the end of this month. Okay. So he's going to... If you have a link to any of that, you want to throw it in this yeah. chat, please feel yep. free. Yep, give me just a second. And I was also going to... Uh, hold on. Um, but yeah, she had, she had a uh, pretty devastating um, it happened. She went from being a fully active 10 year old to being intubated and having to spend time in the ICU to now she is in um, rehab for this, it was something myelitis, I think it was, but it was like her myelin sheath. Oh wow! Um, it was. It's like a one in two million kind of thing. There's, there's the uh, link to his video where he's going over and talking to her dad about it and what what happened to her and where they're at as far as her recovery on it. It's going to be a Sounds like it's going to be a long, long road for her, and they've got some pretty hefty bills. So if anybody wants to go over and check that out, uh, he's got a link to his to the gun or to to, to the GoFundMe mm -hmm. for it. And okay. if you donate twenty dollars and send him a screenshot of your donation, you're in the drawing. For. He's given away a suppressor. The tax stamp is covered. And he's also got um, some body armor that somebody has donated. So go yeah, check All you that. have to do is pass your your background check and then wait for your wait for to your... get out of NFA jail. Yep. So I'm also going to drop um, this is a guy that I discovered on Instagram. He's got a, he's got a small channel. He's just started putting out stuff in the last month or so here so if you guys want to go over and check him out give him a little love because we've all been at this point where we're i mean he's got 39 subs now i did a i dropped a little link for him on my chat on saturday so he's got 39 subs and we've all been there we all know yeah. how how tough it is to get to that first hundred so if you guys want to go over there and give him a little bit of love and try and get him up over that first hump and that's all I got going for me. To load. That is, it's coming up here. Hold on. I'm waiting for my window to load here. It was coming up, and then it stopped, and then it started again. Gunsplaining. Is that is that the channel, Gunsplaining? Yep. 
Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, let's just click on the old subscribe button right there. All right. So go check out um, Gunsplaining, the link that Obnoxious just posted up there. And then go back up to where we had the link posted earlier for uh, 402 Outdoors. And show another Nebraska YouTuber some love there. Let's see if we can't get that 19 subs to grow. Um, let's see if we're up there. We're still at 19. I just refreshed. Come on, y'all. Get up there and sub. It's not that hard. If you're hearing me, then I know you're on YouTube. So 402 Outdoors and Gunsplaining. G-U-N-S-P-L-A-I-N-I-N-G. It's like mansplaining, but it's gunsplaining. So, all right. Thanks for pointing that channel out to us as well. All right. Well, we are about to wrap it up. Like I said earlier, um, please share this. If you know somebody that, uh, like I said, if you're sitting there nodding your head to what we were saying before we kind of got away from, from the weapons talk, um, share this chat, tell them that, you know, at least the first half is worth um, listening to for, for that topic. And hopefully you guys got something out of the, the rest of this too. Uh, sometimes it's nice just to, just to kind of visit a little bit and let the chat kind of go where uh wherever it wants and, and where people want to take it um so uh if you're if you're nodding along with any of this share this with other people that you think will nod along to if you know somebody that um maybe doesn't necessarily agree with some of this and you want them to take a listen and uh you know hit you or even hit us up with any questions we're always um we're always welcome or they're always welcome to hit us up with some questions and anybody that wants to come on the, uh, the live chat and actually um, present a, a different viewpoint from what I present or any of our panelists present. We're always, uh, we're always wanting that too. You're always welcome to come on. I will make sure that it is not a hostile environment. I will sure make sure we don't have a, uh, a five against one type of a gang up, anything like that. If we need to do just one-on-one -on -one and let everybody else be out in the chat. That's fine. We can do it that way. Um, I will. I will give my word that we won't turn into a uh, um, a gang up. There won't be any kind of uh, you know gotcha situation, anything like that. But anybody that feels differently than I do, um, please reach out. And if you want to come on and, and have a chance to at least explain um, what you think and why you think that, that is another reason why. Uh, I wanted to do live chats uh, from the very beginning is, is to get something like that started. So come on out and feel free to disagree. I don't want this to be an echo chamber. I don't want this to only go out to the same, um, you know, 120 people um, every week. I want this to turn into something that actually gets people talking about us and about what we talk about more so about what we talk about, but I want this to grow. Um, I want the support to be there so that uh, I do get more people on Patreon, so I do get more money to put back into the channel, <clears throat> so I can get a nicer computer, better camera setups, better lighting, you know, all that stuff. Um, there just isn't a magic YouTube fairy that comes along and, and makes this stuff happen without uh, some of your support. I'm not, I'm not able to do it without some help, so I'm not asking for help, but anybody that wants to give it, I do appreciate it, and I will take it. This is a capitalist nation. It's capitalism, baby. Uh, if you like what you see and you want to help keep us on the air or on the web, rather, then uh, go ahead and go to Patreon. Help us out. We like it. So with that, I will say good night to everybody who was uh, in the house tonight. The official notebook is being passed my way. Um, so thank you very much to Calaveras 32 Special. Thank you very much to Kingpin. Thank you very much to Travis P11 for being on the chat with us. Thank you very much to Gizzard Gary and Obnoxious One as well for being in the chat with us. Squibload tried. Um, this week I just couldn't get a different... Uh, I didn't have time to, to make something work besides StreamYard. And I know the people that sign in on their phone... Uh, StreamYard gives you fits. I've had it happen myself on StreamYard Mobile. It's not that great to, to try to do this from a phone. So uh, Squib tried it, and before I even got a chance to talk to him, um, it kicked him out, and I think he just said he's not going to... He must have said to himself, I'm not going to keep fighting with it. So Squib, we missed you. If you catch this on the replay, I'm trying to find something that my computer will handle that uh, 
will allow us to not have to make you be on StreamYard. Um, so thank you very much, everybody out there in the chat. Like I said, if you don't say hi to us or at least talk a little bit, we don't know you're there. We can't say hi to you. So Jay Brown, Mike, Boob Sweat, Tennessee Gun Guy, Obnoxious, Keith Gregory, Gun Loving Grandpa, 10X, Travis, Kingpin, Georgia Trucker, SS Pawn, Gizzard Gary, Blue Steel, Tim Foley, Leo Red, Agorizer, New York Outcast, Seven Wonders, G Webs, Midnight Range, Dangerous Freedom, Budget Guns and Gear, The Poor Conservative, Blitz, Ashley at Gunstreamer. I didn't even see you out in the chat, Ashley. Uh, Snob Squib 7, Rupan Obnoxious 1, NS1, Giz C4. Okay. That's some Mitch. of my favorite channels. That's Kingpin. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Kinky Sphincter, Travis T, Vash Matrix, Patriot in the Dark, Idaho Rogers USMC, Ghost Tactical, 9 Millimia, and if anybody was out there and you didn't hear your name read off, you didn't chat enough, make sure that uh, we actually see you. And then my lovely bride will write your name down on the official list. We have one of these every week. And uh, that way I can shout out because we want to thank everybody for being here without you watching this we don't have a channel and uh, there's no need for us to do this so thank you very much all of you all right with that this has been two a tuesday it's the last two a tuesday at least for now it may come back in the future but not anytime in the foreseeable future we are gonna stay here nine o'clock central time next week tuesday night we're still gonna be here but starting october of 2019 we will rename this the Get Off My Lawn podcast because we're going to talk about some stuff that's not necessarily just two-way. We're still going to talk about two-way. We're still going to talk about guns. That's not going to go away. We're just going to be able to do some extra stuff too, and I won't feel quite as guilty about this being a just a gun channel or just a gun chat um, and then not talking about guns. So we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. Um I am kind of cranky and it's easy to get me going on certain topics. You might've noticed it's also easy to distract me and uh, something shiny happens and I'll start ranting about this. And it's not what we're talking about tonight. So some of those things that make me mad, those are going to be some chat topics. Some of the things that make Mrs. Sandhills mad will be some chat topics. And you all are always welcome to contribute topics as well. If there's something that's really been bugging you and you want to either come on and talk about it or at least hear the rest of us talk about it, let us know what that is. Email us, sandhillshooter at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody. We're glad you were here. God bless. Good night. And get off my lawn. And give him the bird. And give him the chicken. <laughs> Adios, Felicia. Good night, Gracie. See you.